Here Hello, we are. Welcome back. <laughs> Here we are, as Dal says. Uh -huh. hey, today we wanted to talk to you guys about some of the saw options that we have. And so we have, um, I think, most of the saws that we carry out on the, the table here, yep. right? So the um, saws for cutting glass break down into kind of two categories. Band saws, which is what you're sort of seeing. Kaylee showing you these three on the end here. Uh, there's the Diamond Elite bandsaw. There's the Precision 2000 and the C40, uh, which in that case is a C40 tall. So the C40 comes two different ways, like a yeah. kind of a standard size. And then this is the tall version. We grabbed the tall one because we thought it was a little more versatile. Um, if you so if you want to look at this, I can show you where the tall comes in. It's like this distance right here. So the other version is just this. This isn't as tall. It's just lower. Yeah. So this one's designed to say maybe possibly do something that requires a bigger throat or whatever. So like you could do a bottle in this one, whereas the standard one I don't think is open enough to do it's that. It's not open enough, yeah. I mean, you could still, like a lot of these band saws, you can cut bottles, but you have to rotate them as you're cutting them at the front of the blade. The advantage of the C40 tall is, I mean, you can just, you know, push the whole blade, uh, the, the whole bottle right Straight through the through. blade. Straight mm through. -hmm. So. But we thought we were going to, you know, we'll show you how uh, they sort of operate, um, tell you some of the uh, features about them. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, you know, message us below or you can always uh, reach us through um, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. Or, or message us. Message us at Instagram. Right? Oh, good. So okay. Can, so there you go. I'm sure you'll figure that's out. That's enough. And sure there's enough places. It, so. so maybe I was just thinking that maybe just initially just explain the difference between the ring oh, saw and great. the band saws because a lot of people have that question you know which one should I get which one works better and there's a couple subtle differences so yeah go. so I guess I'll <laughs> jump on that then. yeah you know we do get asked that question a lot is the difference between a ring saw and a band saw and I, I to be honest I mean I don't think one's better than the other I, they they all cut glass and uh, part of it I think is what type of uh, shapes or how you like to operate works, right? You know, right. I mean, some might feel more uh, familiar to you or make more sense to you as you're using them, but we're gonna show you what the features are. So the bandsaws, so again, like we said, are these three that are down here. They are like a wood bandsaw, if you're familiar with that. The, the blade is a diamond coated blade. So uh, like a, uh, the wood bandsaw, the, the cutting part is only on the front of the blade. So not on the back or the sides. We always have to cut to the front of the blade. Um, if you could, here, I'm going to pop this open real quick because I'll just show you what the blade looks like. You can see it easier once we open the housing here. Is and that, these are pretty easy to change the blade, too, yeah, I, I find. I, 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 I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice. So you see that there's, there's you know, so it's one big circle, right, that the blade is. Um, it fits on these wheels. You know, there's an upper wheel, a lower wheel. Um, as Val was mentioning, what's nice about these uh, bandsaws is it's relatively easy to adjust the tension of the blade. Um, it's also easy to replace a blade if you need to replace a blade. Uh, the, uh, like I said, the only slight disadvantage that some people find is that the, the fact that you always have to cut at the front of the blade. But uh, we're going to show you some cutting here in, in a minute, and you can make up your own mind. I'm trying to do all this stuff backwards. but Good job. Yeah, thanks. That's good. Um, and then the ring saws. So we have a couple of ring saws down here. And... Um, so I know that it's a little bit trickier to see the blade on these. I think down here on the Zephyr, maybe you can see the blade a little bit better, a little more of it's exposed. So this is like a metal wire. It's a stiff blade, not flexible like a bandsaw blade. And the diamond, and it's round. I don't know how well that shows up on the screen there, but it is like a wire. And so the diamond coating goes all around the entire wire. So the advantage to ring saws is you can cut from any surface. You can cut from the side, from the front, to the back. Um, whichever you like mm -hmm. so yep so that's yeah I don't know if you want to yeah, we, yeah well, Val cut a couple of just to show you some of the things that we were doing just uh, real quickly before we came on was just to show you some types of things that show you up? can okay. cut with that um, you can see that uh, so I didn't separate it you can see but I started here and if I just would have gone a little further then these two pieces would have come apart and then somebody could foil that or something yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to not me but if you wanted to it would but they, they are amazing. But also notice, too, I think, you know, the amount of glass that it takes out, you know, because the blade is a, is a little bit chunky. I mean, it's round. So it does take out a little bit more than the bandsaw, which we'll show you in a, in a few minutes. Yep. But I don't know. So that's just another consideration. doesn't bother me, but 
you know. Yeah, you just need to be aware of it. I think yeah, depending on what your, you're doing, as Val said, if you're a stained glass person and you uh, want to cut something and then foil it, the if you always cut on your line with a ring saw, you'll your piece will end up a little smaller than probably what you want it to be. So you just have to you know cut to the outside of the line. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about markers in a minute or so, right? Because uh, the other question we get asked a lot of times is, you know, what if you draw on the glass and all the water that it used doesn't it just don't you just lose your wash line, away? Right? So mm -hmm. we're going to show you a couple of things there. Um, but I think I want to show you the, the C40 first, right? Is that all right? right. So let's I think wander it's wander down here. I think it's you know fine. one of the things that I you know we get a lot of times with some of the feedback we get from customers is always about uh, the water, right? I mean, so the way all the saws work is water does two things one it acts as a lubricant you know to help keep the blade you know working well where the blade's cutting the um on the glass but it also works as a coolant which is probably more important right it keeps the glass cool so that because of the friction you know the blades causing so we don't heat the glass up and crack it so really the more water the better and so sometimes you might feel like you know you're getting a small shower now i put <laughs> i put water in this one a little earlier and i have a habit of just putting in too much water right i think a little bit of water is good so a lot of water should be better so you're going to see this kick around a little bit of water which is some of it's normal but probably not as bad because like i said I, I think i overfilled it a little bit with most of, most of these saws it's real easy to fill the water this one is just under the tray i can just pick the tray up dump water in there i don't know you know it's, it's pretty easy to, to to get it in there um so the uh where you turn them on at is in different spots, but on this particular one on, on the Griffin C40 is on the side here. I just have this toggle switch, so I just gotta pick it up. Now when I turn it on, they all tend to be a, a little noisy, so um, I'm not sure how much talking we'll do while it's running, but uh, which might be nice, right? You, Good, yeah. You're I'll... tired of hearing us talk already? <laughs> you, you get a, you get a you get break. Get a break. So. Yeah. So even though the blade is flat, he's still able to go around in a circle. It, it really still is very functional, and a lot of people think that's going to be a, a real hindrance, but I don't think so. It is kind of raining. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, right? I mean, seriously, they ha it has to be wet, so. Smooth. Nice. Actually, that did a pretty good job, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's actually pretty nice, right? So mm -hmm. you can see um, how, uh, how. Like a little jigsaw. Yeah intricate that can really get even on as Val was mentioning I don't know how well you could hear over the sound of the saw but the the even these with a flat blade where the coating is only on the front you can cut you know that's a pretty in intricate cut it absolutely the, on the back end yeah I absolutely cut, I cut a pretty small little piece there um and um you just have to go slower the other thing also about any of the saws is that we are grinding through the glass right I mean that's what saws are doing I mean we say we're cutting glass but we're grinding through it and, and that takes time and and uh, sometimes people expect the saws to cut faster than they actually do. So the risk is always, you know, pushing too hard, um, putting too much pressure on the, on the blade, um, turning it too quickly, which twists the blade on the band saws. That's, to me, I think, probably the, one of the biggest drawbacks to the band saws is that right. you, you can't twist the glass too fast. So if yeah. you uh, watched uh, how I was... Uh, thanks, Val. You're um, welcome. How, when I was doing the curves, I was, you know, see how slow I was turning the glass, right? I'm actually watching the blade, and I can see the blade, whether it's twisting or not. If I think it's twisting a little too much, I just slow down, right? And then I can do a pretty intricate little mm -hmm. cut on it. So, um, But that's a good point. They, they are not made to use like a, a wood saw or something. I mean, you have to kind of wait for the glass to let you know that it's not pushing back so much. I mean, you can kind of yeah. feel it. Yeah. You, as you it cuts, it, you just keep that pressure on it, but it isn't, you know, zip, zip. That's not going to do your blade any good. Yeah, nope. The um, second saw here is a Precision 2000. This is uh, made by Diamond Tech International, and it is... Um, as this, this one is too. This comes in, there's actually two versions of this one. This is just kind of the standard one. Then they make a deluxe one, which I didn't, I didn't grab the deluxe one, but 
I'll show you the standard one uh, is like this. So you can see the uh, blade is here. What's nice about this is you, uh, it has a really nice blade guide which helps stabilize the blade um, so it's not going to wander on you too much. Uh, you can also notice so that you know I mean, we have this shorter uh, height here than compared to the C40, um, but it still does a really nice job of cutting. I'm just going to cut a little bit on this one so you can see what it's like. Uh, let me tell you about the Deluxe real quick. The Deluxe, the difference is it comes with a tray, so, so the sauce sits inside a tray, so the water is contained inside that tray. Um, or you can do like what we did here where we have this uh, little tube on the front and the water drains down into a bucket or something. The Deluxe one also has a water pump. So you can, um, and so this one uses gravity. So I'm just putting water inside this back here and then the water will come down here and then drip onto the blade. Uh, the Deluxe has a, a pump that just automatically sends the water to the blade all the time. Uh, the third thing the Deluxe has is, it's called a rheostat. So you, it's a way of uh, controlling the speed of the, um, the saw. Yeah, because mm -hmm. sometimes you might find, uh, depending on some glasses are a little more delicate than others. And if they get too hot, they have a tendency to crack. And this particular saw, uh, if you get the deluxe one, you can dial down the motor. Uh, so it goes a little slower speed, so you have a little bit better control. Um, the current standard one is just, it's on and off like the C40 was. So I'm going to turn this one on. I'm just going to cut a little bit here. Um, and you have to open this. Yeah. Oh, that's a, good yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a little, I know this is probably hard to see, but there's a little valve back here. Um, and when I turn this on, you see the water coming here. And um, for some reason, I did a horrible job. I didn't adjust it, so it's not hitting the blade. It's okay. I think it's wet enough just to show how Yeah, it cuts. we just got to get it wet, right? So the other nice thing is see how the water starts to pool? So once the water starts pooling, and the blade's going to hit the water, uh, and that's why it's going to keep it cool. So I'm going to turn it on. Again, I know it's a little loud, so... Blow a little. So you can see that made quick work of that. Um, one of the things, I don't know if you can see, when I was getting to the end of where I was cutting, I started here and came around or vice versa. Uh, I slowed down just a tiny bit. Sometimes at the very end when you have just a little bit of glass left, it just wants to crack at that point. So just going a little slower, you can get it to cut all the way through the whole piece. Uh, again, if you're a, a stained glass person, what's nice is, you know, this edge is ground, right? I mean, you just you could foil it and just go. You're really not that is, one of, the, else, that is so. one of the nice things because if you use the saw, you don't have to grind. I mean, as long as you can stay on your pattern line, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you know, like if you're doing a Tiffany lamp or something, think about how much time that would save you. All those little pieces and no grinding. And Yeah, I know for me, I, you know, I like to recommend saws for people that are either struggling, really struggling with cutting or for people that, you know, have a good understanding of cutting, but they just need something to do all those really tricky cuts that you normally can't do by hand, right? I mean... It, it will save you time if you're doing all these kind of fancy curves and things like that. Um, the, I can tell you that the band saws on straight lines aren't the greatest in the world. Uh, the blade's a little flexible and it moves a little bit. A lot of these though, uh, which I didn't bring in, but there's a, like a little guide you can set in here on top of the table. And then that helps you if you're trying to do something straight. You, you can set up like a fence, you know, so that you have something you can kind of go straight on. Push against. Yes. Let me show you the... Uh, <coughs> Diamond Elite. Oh, okay, good. Here's a piece of glass. Are you going to um, talk about? You want to talk yeah, about that? I was going to talk about that. No, why don't I do that? My hands are all wet, but let's. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. So, yeah. So this, the you know so the issue always about with doing dealing with all the water is that you know how you can can you keep your marker onto the glass? So you know we use a lot of paint pens. I've got a couple of them here, um, silver or gold, and these I uh, just show you if you see the how the how big the mark the line is right so there's a fine and a um, you know a little bit wider one if you're not familiar with these paint pens the way they work is 
um, you have to, when you get them brand new, you have to push them on the glass two or three times to get the, the um, paint to flow into the nib, it's called. And then after that, um, sometimes, oh, shake them. Shake you always it. have to shake them anyways, right? Even, even if you haven't used it in a while. Uh, they recommend you store them horizontal, so not especially not the tip side down because they will leak like crazy if you do that. So leave them kind of flat. Uh, but you can see they do a really nice mark. And then um, we use you know Sharpie sometimes too. I left a Sharpie out there for the same reason. But probably the best thing to do is to protect the line. And what we use around here is a product called Mark Stay. And it is um, a wax substance. And so you just get a little bit on your finger and then just come over and then just wipe it over your line. Now, one thing that really helps, and this helps whether it's the paint pen or using a Sharpie, is to draw your line on and give it a few minutes to really dry mm -hmm. um, and then come back in and do this. Usually what I'll do is I'll trace all my pieces first, then come back and start putting the wax on them. Um, if you give the, the paint a little time to dry, it, it sticks a little bit better. If you put the paint down, then the marks stay right on top. It can sometimes, the whole line will pick up and float off yep. sometimes. So um, there's that, right? Mark stay, good, good product. And then um, I'm going to cut on this one. I think I'm just going to turn it a little bit just so it's a little more comfortable for me to cut. Uh, if that's all right. So... Uh, this particular Diamond Ali, one of the nice things about it is, so it has a pump already. I don't know how well you can see it here in the back. It's so the, the saw is sitting on this tray, and so the pump is here, you know, uh, bringing water to the, um, to the blade. There's a, a on-off switch here, which also is a variable speed. So I can control the speed on this particular saw, which is nice. You know, again, depending on the materials that you're working with, uh, sometimes you might want to go a little slower. Sometimes it's a comfort level too, right? So uh, I like to run it pretty high, so I'm just going to turn this on. Uh, once we turn this on, the pump should start up and water should start coming to the blade. Before we turn it on real quick, Kimberly is asking, will the wax gum up the grinder bit? So the marks say that we've just put oh, on there. Oh, you know, I've never experienced that. And, you know, I've used it a bunch, and I've never really had an issue with it do, doing that. But No. And if grind, I mean, basically you really shouldn't need to grind if, you know, if you cut it on the bandsaw. So, I mean, unless you need to affect the shape or the size somewhat, right? I think she so. needs the blade too, though, right? You're wondering if, the, oh. if, the, if you're going to gum up the blade somehow. I've never experienced that. I don't, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. But. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. So one thing about band saws, oh, I'll tell you real quick, one thing about band saws is, now, not something you want to do a lot, but if you, you accidentally touch it while it's running, it doesn't, it's not really going to cut you. So, you know, I can bump that with my finger, and, uh, you know, it doesn't really do anything. It, it uh, cuts hard things, not soft things. So, let me turn that on real quick. Keep forgetting which is the front part of the blade and doing it sideways. It's, it's hard anyways, backwards. Yeah. I stopped on purpose because I wanted to show you guys. Sometimes you know you're, when you're cutting and uh, maybe you uh, want to come in at a different angle or your glass is too big. I, it's happened to me before where the glass I'm cutting is a little big and I start hitting this side of the saw. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so if you shut it off, one thing you don't want to do is back out of the blade while the blade is running, which I see people do all the time, yeah. right? So so what you want to do is stop and then slide the glass out. What I do is put my finger over the blade here so I don't pull it back out and I just go back the way I came, right? I just keep sliding it, sliding it until I get it to where I started. And then now okay. I can, if I need to go back in and cut it, I can go in and do that. One thing I, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stronger than I thought, right? <laughs> that was totally accidental. So I was just trying to dry it. But yep. um, what I wanted to show you guys was just the, um, I'll, I'm going to do another quick cut here because uh, I know we, we showed earlier about how much 
glass valve pointed out about how much glass the um, ring saws remove from a, a piece of glass when you're cutting it. And you'll, I want you to see the line that a, a, a bandsaw does. It's a little, it takes less glass, it removes less glass. Yeah, because the blade is so thin. Right. Yeah. Donna is asking, are you cutting at full speed right now? Yeah, that was full speed on the, on the Diamond Elite. So you'll notice it, it sounds a little, uh, compared to the 2000, it sounds like it's not working as fast, but it, it works pretty good. And usually I run the Elite at full speed, yeah, don't you? Yeah, usually. Yeah. And John, we'll get to that question about how long the blades last uh, in just a little bit here. Yeah. See the mm -hmm. so that's how much yeah if you compare it I'll grab me yeah thanks Val Val grab this is the one from the the so in my left hand is the the um, ring saw and then the blue one here is the band saw so again if you're just looking at how much material is removed again I don't know how big of a deal it is I don't think it's a huge deal other than you just need to know how much you're removing depending on the project you're making right as Val mentioned before you know with the um, the nice thing about the band saws is I'll grab this piece that I cut on the precision, is that, you know, I cut this out of the, you know, using the bandsaw, I can just foil this and go, right? I don't have to do anything else to compensate for that. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, just enough, if you're a <coughs> copper foil person, it's just enough um, space to foil and solder back in, so, which is kind of nice. Was there uh, another question? So we've got a couple. So yeah. Joan is wondering, how long do the blades last on the ring saw? But let's also talk about that for the bandsaw as well. You know, um, I can tell well, you back in the day, the the glass man or the the um, manufacturers used to recommend like they'd say, "Oh, this blade lasts for a hundred hours." And I think that's pretty much what both types of blades the manufacturers used to say was that whether it was a ring saw or a bandsaw, they'd say about a hundred hours. Uh, what that really means is they don't know, right? I mean, it it depends. I always tell people it depends on how you use it or abuse it. Right. Uh, if you're um, not using a lot of water, if you're pushing on it really quite hard, I mean, you can wear them out quickly, um, uh, or break them, which is the other the other bad thing, right? So um, it's it's really hard to just put a time on them. But I know for me personally, I mean, I have a, a saw at home, and I, man, I can't even tell you the last time I replaced a blade on it. I mean, it's been a couple of years easily. So. Um, but I don't use it every day, right? I, I use it for all my tricky cuts, and I, I do the cuts I can do by hand. I, I do those, and then I use my saw for all the, the, the fancy stuff. And um, I think that's a lot of it is, is how often you use it yeah. and how you use it, like he said. Um, if you push hard all the time or if the tension isn't right, if you get, it, if you get the blade too taut or the tension's too tight, it's much easier to, to have a problem breaking a blade or something. But generally, they, you know, like it's like any tool. If you take care of it and sort of don't do what it isn't made to do, which is, I think, sometimes yeah. the mistake people don't realize that you can't just, you know, push really hard and yank it around. And it, they require a little bit of a finesse. But if you do treat them that way, they, they do a nice job and they can last quite a while. Yeah, I, I kind of compare them sometimes to uh, the grinding heads on, on grinders, right? The grinding bits that are on grinders, right? So like you use those for a while and then I know for me it's uh, like when I start getting frustrated that it's taking too long to grind or taking too long to cut, then I'm like, well, that's time to get a new blade, right? That's time to swap the blade out. So, I mean, I, I know people that, that'll use the blades until they, to me they look like there's not a, you know, a, any diamond left on them and they're still cutting on them. They'll, it just goes slower. So uh, some of it's just a um, frustration level, I guess, on, on your grinding. You mentioned cut. grinders, so which is a great segue. Yeah. So Anne asked, can you also use the mark stay with grinders? Oh, yeah, it's perfect for that, right? So anytime, yep. again, you're working with uh, any kind of a marker and you have water, a grinder or a saw, and you're trying to um, keep your line on, um, you want to, uh, you know, use something Smear like that. Smear that on there, great. right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, it, well it does work well, and it lets you stay, see where you're going, yes. right? Do you know? Don't. Okay, because I forgot to check. Okay, and Debbie's yes. got another question. So she yep. has both, but she prefers her ring saw. Yeah. Um, the only thing that bothers me is that the whole filling up the reservoir to cut one piece, and then you either have to empty it, pull off the grid, and pull the arm out of the water, unless there's an easier way. 
But you'd also like to know what you guys prefer. I, ring I, saw or band saw. I'm sorry. She said she uses the... Sorry, I didn't understand She's got the her. ring saw. Yes. But, like you'll show here, so she hates to having to fill up the whole reservoir just to cut one piece. Oh. And then needing to empty it. She didn't want to leave it sitting. Oh, she wanted to leave it mm -hmm. sitting. Well. Well. <laughs> well. I mean, around we, here, we yeah. leave the water sitting, so I... I um, I do the same thing, right? I mean, it just evaporates eventually or something. Yeah, right? I've so, never emptied and, one. And then, yeah, we've never, I know, so that's bad that we don't clean the, the tray out, even though the inside would say tell you to do. So, um, so I'm not really sure. I guess if you're cleaning all the time, I can see that might be a little bit of a pain, but. Um, which yeah, do you prefer was oh, the which other. Which do I prefer? Was the oh, other that's question. A great question. Well, you know, I, said, I mentioned it earlier. I really, you know, I'm, we're spoiled, you know, Val and I, because we're here at Delphi and we have access to these saws. And uh, it just depends on the project I'm making, you know, which one I use. Um, I can tell you that I do lean towards band saws, mainly because, you know, I know when, when Val and I first got started a couple years ago, there was only uh, band saws available, right? That was the first tool that came out for cutting glass that was, you know, a mechanical, you know, instead of a hand cutter, right? And so... Uh, I don't know if you're like that, right. but then we, we yeah. started using bandsaws, so we, I, I tend to lean towards a bandsaw. I think that's it. I think it's what you get used to using. But l we don't have a problem with these. I mean, I don't have a problem with them at all. And the directional, you know, cutting is really comes in handy for some I people. Do you? Mm -hmm. And but see, you and I have used this long enough where we don't find that limiting. Like some yeah. people who maybe haven't done much do. So. I, I don't know. I think, you know, come on over and you can try them out here. You can switch one. <laughs> yeah, come works. visit us. You can yeah. sort of try one out. Yes, Maybe Debbie, so to like answer your question, we do leave the blade in the water. In our classroom, it is. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Water's in there, the blade's in there. Yeah. We just yep. turn it off and walk yeah. away. Yep. You know, I do the same thing at home. And like as I mentioned, you know, just a few minutes ago, I don't use my saw every day. So, I mean, I know the water sits in there. And, and I mean, I, again, I haven't had any problems. I've had saws for many years without any issues. Um, We've got a good question that segues into the Taurus. So okay, um, the ring saw has the ability to cut outside the tub. What project um, would you or could you use that technique for? So we can talk about the Taurus and kind of talk about that benefit too. Yeah, I didn't understand the yeah, question. Yeah, you can cut it. You can remove the saw outside oh, of the tub, right? So Got it. Um, we, uh, that's a great question. So yeah, let's, let me talk about the ring saws first, right? So we have two different ring saws. Uh, one, this one's a Gemini, uh, Taurus three. it's called. Um, this is a Griffin Zephyr, and they, for the most part, I mean, they're so com they're so similar, right? Yeah. That I, Val and I often don't really I don't make a big distinction between them, to be honest. A lot. I mean, they they operate exactly the same. It's a ring. Now the rings aren't inter interchangeable, so the blades are not interchangeable. So you you know whatever blade you have, you have to or whatever saw you have, you have to get the blade for that specific saw. But um, they work pretty much the same. They, there's water down in the trays, right? So we put water down here, and again, this is another one of those things <laughs> that you. I know there's a water level, and if you go higher than that, it's just going to kick out a little more water, which, um, you know, it's not a bad thing, right? I mean, it's, uh, again, I think no. the more water, the better, personally. And like you said, you can put it on this grid. I mean, you know that ahead of time, that it's going to be a little wet, and it's going to throw yeah. water a little bit, or just, you know, a big tray, or, you know, yeah, it's, not, it's not hard to, to manage the water. Yeah, it really is. Notice we're working on these um, waffle grid, it's called, that kind of lock together. And what's nice about them is they catch the water, right? Each little trace where it catches the water. And you can even set them up also to act as a backsplash. Um, they just kind of lock in, and it does come with this little, uh, like, O-ring to kind of hold on mm -hmm. to the corners for you. Then uh, we also had uh, on the C40, uh, early on, we should probably mention it too. Right. You know, we had these backsplashes too, again, just another way to help kind of contain the water. Um, that does help too, like, like you would do with a grinder. It just keeps yeah, it just from like, flying yeah, exactly. on your yeah. wall or whatever. Same thing but, you do with a grinder. Yeah. So let's, uh, I'm going to cut on the um, Zephyr real quick first. And then, um, just so you guys can see what that's like, uh, I think, I don't know how you feel about it, Val, but sometimes I feel like these are a little louder. Um, so I was just, actually, I was just trying to remember which of these two is louder. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I know, so we're going to find out here. So I'm going to find out in a second. So uh, I'm just going to do a little cutting on it so you can see what it's like. Yeah. I, this one's louder. I know it is. So show the direction, how you can just go straight sideways.
there you go. So if if you notice from what I did compared, like I didn't move the glass, right? I mean, I wasn't turning and twisting the glass like on the bandsaws. I'm just moving the glass to get the shape cut out. So I can tell you that in, for either one of these ring saws, they, they they recommend the best place to cut them is at like a 45 degree angle to the to the blade. Uh, you can see I was cut, I cut from I think every side I tried mm -hmm. to anyways I tried to cut from the front the side the back even. <laughs> so when you're doing that, you should go a little slower. Uh, like I said, they, all the kind of the uh, uh, stabilizers that help stabilize the blade are really designed. I said for something coming in at like 45 degree angle. So if you're doing a lot of cutting from the side or front and back, you'll probably shorten the life of the. Uh, the, they're called grommets that kind of hold the uh, the wheel in place. Mm -hmm. Th they're hidden it down in here and up into the saw, but um, but you can see it was you know I mean again pretty nice job right that did a nice cut pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't all that time. It's beautiful. Right? No, worked good. Let's. Uh, this go one is a lot louder. Yeah, this one's a little bit louder. I, one, the reason why I came to this one is this particular saw has some different blades too. So. You can get, you know, we were talking about how much uh, glass that this removes uh, from when you're cutting, but they come with something called a thin blade. Uh, sometimes people use that if you're a fuser and you're working with dichroic glass, you know how expensive that can be, and so you might want to save every little tiny bit. So they'll go with a skinnier blade, a, a, a narrower diameter, just so you don't uh, lose as much of the glass. And so that works pretty well. They come with a what they call a slicer blade, which is a more of a flat blade, so similar to like a... Uh, like a tile saw almost kind of a blade so a stiffer flat blade and um, oh a separating blade so the, the the Taurus comes with a blade that will it actually will come apart so it, in theory you could drill a hole in a piece of glass um, slide the blade through the hole and then cut from the inside of a shape so you know one thing I like to warn people I think Val was I could tell by the way she's looking at me I'm probably gonna say the same thing right so one one of the things about all the saws is they allow you to make all these crazy cuts that you can never do by hand, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily good cuts. They're, sometimes they're not very stable, right? I mean, uh, I mean, Val and I have seen over the years people bring in panels that had cracks in them because they cut all this really fancy stuff and they didn't have brake lines. So this is stained glass people, right? Uh, and they didn't have uh, like what we would consider a normal brake line. Well, the brake lines are there for a reason. One is to help with the stress of the glass. And so the glass broke over time just because it was just too crazy of a shape. So that's just a little warning there, I guess. Right. Uh, and then in regards to that same situation, fusing is a whole different story, right? Yeah. So if you do some sort of impossible cut, or I always like to use an L, as an example, oh, yeah. you know, because if I cut an L, then I can do it with a bandsaw, but this glass in the corner doesn't know to keep running, you know, when I come in to cut that out. But when we, then if we take that piece of glass and fuse it, that sort of recreates that piece of glass. And so that sort of eliminates that kind of stress in that corner. Whereas if you foiled that and put that in a in a panel and soldered and mm, that corner is going to be it's going to be pretty um, stressed I yep. think oh, and yeah. over time it's going to crack so sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should but I also think too I wanted to say that I think that a huge value of these is the fact that it you know you can cut those tricky cuts and you can do it once as opposed to trying to do some of these tricky cuts and having to keep redoing it because you keep breaking the glass. So yeah. sometimes for me, because slow isn't always my comfort zone, you know? I mean, I'm watching Roy do that and I'm just like, mm, God, let's just get it on, you know? But, but I do think that if you look at it in terms of, well, you know, it took me three minutes to cut that, you know, but if I'd have tried to do it by hand, I might have, it might have taken me a half an hour and six oh, pieces of glass. Sure. So, yep. so, I mean, you can, it offsets, right? It offsets that maybe they aren't the fastest thing, but they certainly can save you money in regards to, you know, having an awful lot of issues cutting one tricky little piece, mm -hmm. right? So, anyway, I do think they're, they're, they're valuable, but this one has more options than some of them. Does that one come up too? Does that one have? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. Just this one does. Yeah. So let me, uh, I'm going to, did we cut on this one? Yeah, I haven't cut on this one. Yeah, no. Let me cut on it real quick. No, because the sound, I want people yeah, to hear the sound. Just so you can see. So this one, if you look close, so it's got a, 
This is a stabilizer. Again, this helps keep the blade from moving around too much. Um, this one also has a light right here on the front of it. So I guess we didn't talk about all the features of all the saws, but a couple of them have lights on them, which are really nice, right? Because it just shines right down where you're cutting. It just makes it a little bit easier to see. Before you cut on this, Greg is asking what uh, do you recommend to cover the glass with as the Sharpie flies off when using it. So we did show earlier oh. our Mark Stay Mark wax. Stay. Is that the label? Nope, nope that's the back. Totally. There you go. Less. Shut up. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> so that's oh what we my use gosh. Our lines. <laughs> yeah, it works pretty. I think the again the mark stay I think works really well. The key uh, again is to put your marker on, let the marker really dry, give it a few minutes to really dry, put the wax on, give the wax a couple of minutes to kind of set up and dry too, and then cut. I, I find it much better than if you just put the marker mark stay and then try to cut right away. It'll it still has a tendency to come off sometimes. So. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're laughing at me or laughing at me. No, I was laughing at the wax on, okay. wax off thing. So this one is, um, here's the on and off switch, right? So it's a toggle switch, but they just put this little fancy thing on there so you can turn it on and off. see it all when I was cutting. So I, I was know. Just, I, just I almost said, where are you going? Guessing. But I, I didn't. No okay. I, I couldn't see it very well. But anyways, you get the idea, right? So there's that. And you can see how that piece fits inside there. So again, just if for copper foil people, for lead cane might work pretty well. For foil people, it's probably a little too big of a gap if you're just going to try to foil and solder that back in. But again, it does a really nice job. Oh, I want to make one other comment too about fusers, right? So if you're a, a fuser, um, so we, we cut this with the saw, right? So essentially we ground this edge, as I mentioned earlier, right? And you should clean this edge before you fuse it. And I like to use a, um, a small brush. Mm -hmm. I think that's better than just running it off, run it in water and then wiping it dry with a towel or something. I think the reason why is because sometimes you get some ground up glass. I know it's, you can't really see it, but you get this ground up glass in that rough surface from the cutting. And then when you're fusing, sometimes that shows up and you yeah. see this little gray mark or something. A little shadow looking yeah, line or and something. You can really, yeah, notice it sometimes. So just, I, I take it to the sink, a little running water, a small brush, um, and just kind of, you know, knock it off, right? So clean the edges a little bit better. You'll get a, a better look when you're to your fuse piece. So one of the other features about this particular saw is that, as somebody asked us, I think a little while ago, yes. was... Um, Vicky was curious about yeah, the Good, Vicky. I was going to get back to it. I didn't forget it. So is that the, um, the, whole, the whole saw comes out. And um, so this will come out of the water and like this. And so now it's a portable saw. Now, one thing that I forgot was there is a, a cover for this, a plastic cover that comes on and attaches right here, and it covers everything up so you that... You left it off so we can see the grommets. That's, I did it on purpose, just so you could see all how the inner workings here. But it's also full of sponges that you would get really wet, right? And that's where the water's going to come from. So it's limited. You have to continually kind of rinse that out and add more water as you go. But otherwise, it's portable. I could pick this up and cut it somewhere. So I guess the question is, you know, what would I use it for, right? So a lot of times, it's probably something that is probably bigger than... Then that fits on the um, the top, the tabletop here of the grinder. That would be a reason to you know have it portable. I know one time we had taken a big uh, piece of a sheet of glass and and we were cutting the edge and so we just kind of slid the edge off the table and then we're cutting a, uh, the edge just to create a design in the edge of a it was I don't know 24 by 48 or something. It was a big mm. sheet of glass. So um, it will do that type of thing. Um, I mean, if you're just doing the, some of the small stuff that we're showing, cutting for like stained glass projects and stuff, I'm not sure how practical it is to actually pick it up and move it somewhere, but but you easily can, as you can see. And yes, Marilyn, the Torrent does have a thin uh, cut blade that you can add onto it. 
Yep. Yeah, so the blade, since we're getting a couple questions about it, let me just show you real quick, is that, so uh, the real simple thing is that you see the blades here and there's a belt, right? So now on the, on the ring saws, what wears out first are these grommets. These grommets are what's keeping the blade in place. Um, the next thing that's gonna wear out is the belt because uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but the blade rests right on the belt. So the belt is what's driving the blade. So as the belt wears out, you, you'll get a little slippage sometimes with the blade. Uh, so these wear out first, um, then it's gonna be the belt. Uh, again, the, you know how long they last, I'm sure somebody's gonna ask that question. Again, it just really depends on how much you use it and how much you're really you know, pushing on it like crazy. Um, the, uh, if you look at this grommet here, if you loosen this grommet and it slides over, then you can just pop all this off and then you can, well, you have to take this, this guide off here, but then loosen this up, it'll slide back this way and then you can pop the blade out, pop the belt kind of comes with it. Then you would put, replace the blade that way. So it really is, like I said, most of them, what's nice about all of these machines is you, you don't have to be like some kind of mechanic to know how to like uh, change blades or change the grommets in that situation. The, uh, we didn't talk about it with the uh, band saws, but let me show you real quick since we're standing here. Um, this one here, if you can see right behind the blade is this little white block, right? So there's one here and there's one right underneath down here somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So those are what's helping keep the blade stable and eventually you're gonna cut through those and you're gonna have to replace them and uh, they're pretty easy to replace. There's a set screw on the side that you loosen up, you pop that out, slide a new one in. Uh, actually this top one, what we do here is just, there's four sides to that so we just rotate it until eventually you'll cut through the whole thing and then, then you're done using it. Ann's got a great question. What are the symptoms that the grommets need to be replaced? Oh, okay. Oh, great question. Yeah, so what you're going to notice is your blade's a little looser. And what I mean by that, it's moving more than you're expecting it to move. Um, you might even see it start to cut into the, um, the tabletop, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you can see on this one very well, but you can see here we started cutting into the tabletop. You start seeing that. It's probably the grommet issue. The grommets are getting too worn, and so now the blade can move too much. Again, the, the uh, danger with that is you've increased the risk of maybe breaking the blade because now the blade can move uh, more, right? So, um, and it doesn't hurt to just um, inspect them, right? I mean, take a look at them. You'll see, again, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but there's a groove right in the middle of these. And if, if you see that the groove starts getting really pretty wide, uh, then, it's, then it's time to replace them. I mean, you just know the blade's moving too much, yeah. yeah. So hopefully that answered that question. And if you have, you guys come up with, you know, think of other questions later, feel free to email us. You know, we're, we try to answer them all. Um, this actually was, uh, this particular presentation was because somebody asked us about, I think the C40 down there. And so we thought, hey, what a great idea. Let's talk about all the saws we have. So if you have ideas for other things you would like us to do, um, I mean, feel free to reach out to us. Melanie's got a question. How do you adjust the tension on the bandsaw blade? Bandsaw blade? Uh, on which one? This one? Sure. Let's do this one. So, um... Let me, I'm opening it up so you can see it a little bit easier. It makes more sense, I think, if you, if you see it, right? So this wheel is the one we can control. The bottom wheel is fixed, and we can't do anything to the bottom wheel. So what we can do to the top wheel is raise it or lower it. And so that's what this knob does right here, raise or lower it. But what's really important is there's a knob here on the back that you probably can't see very well. Let me see if I can turn the saw a little bit more. Yes. So this knob, you want to think of this knob as, yeah, where did that come from? Is um, locking the wheel in place, right? So this, this knob right now is tight because it's locking that wheel in place. So if I want to move that wheel, I loosen this knob up, right? Lefty loosey. And then once that, that knob is loose, I can then raise or lower the wheel. Does that help with the adjusting? Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Is that good? Yeah. yeah, you know, so like Val mentioned earlier too, one of the, the things about these is sometimes people have them too tight. Um, if you bought this brand new and it came out of a box, it's been adjusted by the factory. So and that's usually pretty good. Uh, they know what they're doing, but they can get kind of out of adjustment, you know, as you kind of use them. Uh, what I always tell people is you want to look right here. See the blade right here? So when the blade is running, this blade here should move a little bit. You want to see a little movement in the blade. It should bounce back and forth a tiny bit. If it's like as still as can be, you're too tight and you run the risk of breaking the blade. And then if it's too loose, you know, if it is really bouncing like crazy, you run the risk of knocking it off the wheel, which mm -hmm. isn't the end of the world, but you know, you got to put it back on and you have to do all that. So, 
Okay, so Donna's got a question. Okay. Which is your favorite band song? Oh, man. <laughs> mm. Which is well, um, as I mentioned earlier, this um, this particular band song is the one that I am most familiar with. Uh, so it, I tend to lean towards using this one a lot. Um, and as Val had mentioned before. Uh, you know, we're pretty familiar with the bandsaws, and we can do some pretty uh, intricate cuts with them. So uh, I don't find them very limiting at all by any means. I think it depends on kind of what you're working for and what, you, what you've got, too. Yeah, oh, it's totally, I think, what you're trying to do. I mean, and this it, is a really good starter one the, if you, know, you just the want to test the waters. Yeah, the nice thing about this one, this precision one, is it is a great starter one. I mean, if you're just using a saw to, like, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to do most of your hand, you know, cutting yeah. by hand. and You just need to cut just a few occasional. pieces out every now and then with you know, the really tricky ones that are driving you crazy. This is a great saw for that. Um, the blade is the same quality blade that's on the more expensive saw. I mean, they, they put in the exact same blade. So it's these stainless steel diamond coated blades. Um, it's, you know, the only real difference is, you know, some of this is plastic. And so that's where some of the cost comes, you know, they can reduce the cost because it's not all metal on this small one, mm -hmm. but, but they work real well. I mean, we know people have had them for years without any, any issues with them whatsoever. And, um, I think I can't get this closed for some reason. Is this a light? Yeah, this one has a light. This one has a light, which is a nice feature. Yeah, the, and yeah, then this one doesn't. The so. Diamond Elite has a light. Yeah, it's you'd have to turn it on in the back, and then I know it's too bright in here. You can't really see it, but then it shines. Oh, it shines right down there where my fingers are. Mm -hmm. They all have their pluses and minuses. It just depends Man, what they you're certainly looking for. Do. Yeah, they really do. I mean, it's unfortunate. We we wish you all lived closer. You could just come in and you could try them. We would let you. Come in and you can try any of the saws that you want to try. So, I mean, you, just make a, you can make a road trip and come see us. For sure, during Glass Getaway this June. <laughs> um, right now, all of the saws that we have shown you guys today are all on sale through the end of the month. So, if you found yep. one that you like yeah. and you want to try, now's a great time to buy. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining yep. us today. See you next time. Yeah, right? we'll see you next time.